In this video, I'll show you how to model woven objects in Blender. So this method of creating woven objects can be used for many things. For example, like a metal grate. It could also be used for a chain link fence. It could also be used to create a woven basket. And it could be used to create a metal mesh, which for example, might be on the top of a microphone. Now real quick before we continue, I want to let you know about a really great add-on for creating micro meshes. With the Simply Micro Mesh add-on, you can quickly and easily create chain mail, chain links, cloth and fabric weaves, scales, and other types of micro meshes. Select the mesh that you want to add the micro mesh to and make it its own object. Then enable the micro mesh on the object using the add-on. There are many different customizable settings to control, like the size of the micro mesh, as well as the rotation and randomize. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So in a new scene in Blender, we first need to install an add-on in order to create this woven effect. So let's click here on edit, we'll go to the preferences, and then if you go over here to get extensions here on the search, you can search for extra and you can add the extra curve objects. So just click on the install button to install the extra curve objects. And then once you do this, if you go over here to the add-ons tab and you search for extra, you can see here it is extra curve objects. You can also click on save preferences so it's always enabled and I'll close the preferences. So now what I'm gonna do is just delete everything and I'll just go to the add menu and I'll go to mesh and I'm just gonna add a plane. So I'll zoom into the plane and I'll go into edit mode and then I'm just gonna press control E and I'll just subdivide it. And then again, control E and subdivide. So it's a bit subdivided. So we're now going to go back to object mode. So now I can go to the add menu and if I go here to curve because we enabled the add-on we have all these extra curve objects. So we're going to go to knots and then we're going to use this Celtic links. So just click on that and you can see that it's going to add this curve here along the plane. Now don't move the object or click away from the selected object. What you want to do is just click right behind me on the Celtic links and this is going to bring up some settings. So first you have the handle type. So there's auto and there's aligned. So you can see if I turn it to aligned, it looks a lot more like maybe a metal grate because it's really straight or I can keep it on auto. Now there's also a weave up and weave down. So you can have it going back and forth and kind of weaving through itself so I can turn the weave up like that and then I can drag the weave down just like that. Now there's also this bevel depth here so if I turn this up and down this is simply going to change the thickness. So you could have really thick weaves or you could make it really thin if you want to. Now if you set the handle type to aligned instead of auto you now have this crossing angle and crossing strength. So I'm just going to turn this up a little bit and you can kind of see we're getting some cool effects. And then I can also change the crossing angle and so if I turn this up you can see now it looks really smooth and it's more circular. And then I'll just change the weave up and weave down just like that so they're not overlapping. So if I turn the crossing strength down to zero, you can see it's going to be really sharp. If I turn the crossing strength up a bit, you can see it's going to be rounding over. So now you can see the holes there are a bit more square instead of circular. Now when you add the Celtic links, it's not going to add it on top of the object necessarily. It's going to add it wherever the 3D cursor is. So if I hit shift C, that is going to bring this 3D cursor into the center of the scene. So if I just delete the Celtic links and I'll move the plane over and then what I can do is just again hit shift A go to curve we can go down here to knots and then add the Celtic links so you can see it's going to be added here in the center because the cursor was right there so this can actually be really useful if you have an object but you don't want the object to be overlapping because you want to be able to see through it and just see what it looks like on its own that can be very useful because you can put the 3d cursor in the center and just have the object over here now there's also an easier and faster way to add the Celtic links that I'll be using for the rest of this video so instead of going here to the curve going all the way down here and finding it, what you can do is just hit F3 for the search. Then you can start to type it in. So type in Celtic and you can see here, add the Celtic links. This way I can just hit F3 and it's already going to be there because this is the last operation which I just added. Now if I click back on the Celtic links, you can see our settings have disappeared. And this is why it's important to not deselect the object or move the object until you're completely done with the settings. However, if the settings have disappeared but you still want to adjust the look of it, there's a few things you can do. So one thing you can do is select the curve and then click over here on the object data properties and I can open up the geometry and you can see that there's a few settings, for example, the bevel depth. So if I drag the bevel depth, that's going to change the size of it. So you can rechange the size of it even if the settings disappear. Now there's also this geometry extrude value and for some reason it extrudes it by a very small amount. So this is basically going to make it longer. So that could be useful maybe for making like a woven basket. You could turn this up and make it thicker. However, I'm just going to turn it down because I want it to be 
be fully circular instead. Now these Celtic Link objects are just a regular curve object, so if you hit tab to go into edit mode, you can select the different curve handles and you can move them around if you want to adjust it later. Now the topology of your mesh is going to determine how the grid looks. So for example, if I just move these out of the way, we'll go to the add menu and I'm just going to add a cylinder. I'll go into edit mode and I'll just scale the cylinder up. Let's just move this over here. And then if I just again hit F3, add Celtic links, you can see because the topology was really stretched and these faces were really stretched, you can see the curve here is going to be really stretched. However, if I move these out of the way here, let's just duplicate this again and move it over here. I can now go into edit mode and I'll hit control R to add a loop cut and I'll scroll my mouse up like this and then left click and right click. So now the faces are much more even and they're even like a square. Let's also go here to the face select. We'll select the top face and I'll hit I to inset, click there, I to inset and just do that a few times. So now back in object mode, if I just hit F3, add Celtic links, you can see that the topology is gonna be a lot different. So this one is a lot more detailed because it uses the faces to determine the amount of geometry and the amount of those curves. Now I also wanted to show you how you can create a chain link fence. So if I just go to the add menu, I'm just going to add a plane. Let's rotate the plane by 90 degrees on the X axis and I'll just move it over here. So the Celtic links are added in the center. And if I go into edit mode, I want to hit control E and I'm going to subdivide it and I'll do that five times. So three, four, five. I'll go back to object mode. Again, I can just hit F3 and add Celtic links. Now the Celtic links are rotated back and that's because I need to apply the rotation of the object. So if I just delete the Celtic links, I'll select the plane again and hit control A and I'm going to apply the rotation. Now if I hit F3, add Celtic links, you can see it's going to be rotated over. So let's go to the settings. So this weave up here, I'm going to make this a negative 0 0.01, just negative 0 0.01. And then on the other one here, I'm going to have this the same number, but not negative. So just 0 0.01. And then it's also way too thick. So let's turn this bevel depth way smaller. So I'm going to turn this to a 0 0.002 here, 0 0.002 there on the depth. So it's a lot more thin. And then here on the handle type, I'll change it to auto so that it's a lot more smooth. So now we can just close the Celtic link settings. I'm going to select it again, and then I'll just go over here to the object data properties. And you can see on the extrude value, it's being extruded up a little bit. So I'll turn the extrude value on the geometry just to zero. So that looks a lot like a chain link fence. Now I'm also going to show you how you can create a woven basket. So to create a woven basket, I'll go to the add menu and add a cube. We'll go into edit mode and I'm going to scale the cube down on the Z axis. So it's a bit more flat. Then we'll just go to the face select. We'll just select the top face and I can just hit X and we'll just delete the faces. I'll go back to object mode and I'm now going to hit control two to add a subdivision surface with two levels. Let's go over here to the modifier properties. And I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit more. So it has a bit more detail. So I'll turn both the viewport and render levels up to three, and then I'll click on the dropdown and apply the modifier. So I'm just gonna move the object over and then I can hit F3 and we're just gonna add Celtic links again. So I'll turn the weave up to a negative 0.03 and the weave down to a 0.03. Then here on the bevel depth, I turn this to a 0.04 so that the weave is a lot thicker. And there we go, we now have a nice woven basket. So that is how you can use the Celtic links to create some really cool woven objects in Blender. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching. Watching. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, definitely check out Simply Micro Mesh if you'd like a really great Blender add-on for creating some really cool micro meshes. But I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching.